Hi everyone, so in this lesson we're going to start building um, a slider in the UI and have that control a variable which will be seen in the uh, in the blueprint and we'll get that to create a print string. Um, it's, it's quite a, a simple step but it's necessary to get us to the point where we're going to do DMX later. So let's jump back into the the editor. Um, now we've, we've left it with the uh, the widget loaded, it loads automatically in the level blueprint. We have a button in there called test, which is just doing something for now. I'll leave it there for the moment because it could be useful for testing. Um, what we're gonna do is create a slider. So I've got a slider here, click and drag, and put it into my box, there we go. So it's living there at the moment. Um, this could be changed in a number of ways. We can make it look better, worse. This is just the default one Unreal gives you. Uh, if you're a junkie like me and love marketplace assets, you can buy loads of UI assets uh, try to look for a deal when you know, you've know got a, a cyber week or something. Uh, I only say that because it's been Black Friday recently and we've had loads of good deals coming along for these sort of things. And it'll give you loads of content that you can load into one of these sliders. So I'm just going to leave it as it is because it's just for demonstrating at the moment. This is a test project. Uh, later on we'll make it look nice. But that's a slider. It's got loads of tools. It's got ways of making it bigger and smaller. Um, obviously we can drag it around just like we did the button. Uh, we need to name it. It's currently slider zero. We're going to call it slider intensity because that's going to be the first parameter we're going to make on our DMX. Now we have several different ways of changing the, 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 the values that go in and out. Um, we could send it to a, a variable um, directly by creating a, a link to the value that it, it generates but there's a, a much neater way of doing it, and I'd be glad to not explain that very well. Currently, this this is the most important bit here. It's set to maximum value of one, minimum value of zero, and the default value, what it starts at, is at zero. Now, in DMX world, we do everything into 255 because, the, well, actually, it's 254. DMX has 255 bits, so everything goes from zero to 254, and 127 is in the middle. So if we want something to sit in the middle, like pan and tilt value, you'd want the value to be 127 and your max value to be 254. So we're gonna put this at 254 and then zero and zero because that is the uh, the intensity of the, of the object. Uh, right, then we're gonna pop over to the, oh no, sorry, not, we're gonna go back to the UI, I haven't done something. We have to create an event. Uh, now, these are all very similar to the button that we had before. Uh, you'll see you've got on mouse capture begin, on mouse capture end, um, on control capture begin, on controller capture end, that's if you're using a gamepad. On value change is the one that we want. Okay, so when it detects any sort of change in the value of the slider, it will create uh, an event. So let's click on that. There we go, it's added it to our graph. Now this is different from the button, if you notice. The button, let's just tidy that up, I do like things to be neat. Um, it creates an event and that's all it does, it just detects the event and goes. This one, however, has the event, but it also has a value, and this value will be whatever is coming out of the slider. So I am going to remove the print string and the get nodes and all of this stuff from the button, because I, uh, I want it for testing this value here. So to do that, I've got to hold down the button Alt, and that allows me to delete or disconnect nodes. Right. So I'm gonna pull that down to here, and I'm going to use it again. I'm just going to drag this into the execute pin, and I'm going to see the value here. I'm going to drag that into string. Now what it's done, because this value is a, a float, which means it's made up of lots of um, uh, lots of different numbers, so you, you've got a 0 0.0000, it's a very accurate number, um, and it's going to convert that into a string, which is letters and words, which is what needs to be printed. Pretty much everything that you're going to put into a print string is going to get converted somehow because it always needs to be a string at the end. So I am going to change this to back to one second. I've got to stop pressing these buttons in the notepad, haven't I? There we go. Um, so the uh, you can see me again now. I lost my camera earlier. So I will set that back to two seconds, and that is going to send uh, the value of the slider to the print string, so we can check it. Let's do compile, save, go back to the DMX console, hit play, and now we've got our slider. Now if I drag this, we should see the value of the slider is changing. All right? That's very handy, isn't it? So we can check what's working and what's not working. Stop that. Now, 
the whole point of this lesson is that we're actually building variables, right? So we need, we need to figure out how to get this value to store as a variable. Let's just delete this print string for the moment. I'm just going to hit delete, get rid of that. Um, move it out of the way. We'll use it again in a second. This value we know now can create a number between 0 and 244 because that's what we set in the slider uh, value range. To make a variable, there's a couple of things you can do. You can click it up here, uh, add a variable and set it. But a really simple way to do it is just to right click on the word value and it says promote to variable. And there we go, we now have a variable. What is a variable? So a variable is something that can store a value or a piece of information. Uh, you can have a set and a get, right? So set is you set the value of that variable and then you can get it and receive it later. And we're going to use this a lot in this and they get quite complicated because we've got here uh, a normal uh, a normal variable. But if I click on here, I can change it to an array and we saw arrays earlier with our DMX information or a map, which is going to come up as well because that's how we get information into uh, the DMX fixture library. So we've got a set, we're setting the value of the variable value. We don't want to call it that. We're going to call it VAR. This is my format, not in my else's. I don't know if anyone else does it this way, but I like to start my variables with the VAR prefix. And then I'm going to call it uh, oh, int slider. I'm, I'm catching myself there because int is a type of variable. And um, I'm going to call it int because it's intensity. That could get confusing later, but we'll see. Um, we could change it to a different type of variable here. There's loads of different types. I mean, you've got every type imaginable. I think we've got DMX variables if you needed it. They're all in there. But majority of variables are booleans, integers, bytes, floats, strings. Um, none of the others are going to come up in this project. Uh, and I'll explain what they all are as we go. So we've got a variable now. Now, it's got an execute pin in and out. So we need to use that. Because at the moment, this isn't going to set anything because we're not telling it to work. It's turned off effectively. So what we want to happen is that when the slider gets moved, it's going to trigger an execute command. So we want that to execute the set. It's now going to set the value into this variable, variable int slider. And then we're going to tell it to print the print string. And it's converted it back into a string. So exactly the same. Compile, save, DMX console. Let's play it again. And now we should see the same values, okay, it's still printing it. What we're seeing there is the variable uh, output. The test this is really working, we're gonna be really bold. We are going to drag that out more. We're gonna disconnect this from the print string. We are gonna move the print string back over here. We're gonna use our button. And do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna delete the network card, IP address stuff, we don't need that. We're gonna connect that up to the button. Now I could drag this back up here and connect it to the string. Um, that would then mean that every time the button got clicked, it would print whatever word it's receiving from here, which would be the same set of numbers. Um, I'm gonna do it with the variable that we've just created. So I'm gonna grab this variable, pull it into the blueprint, release, and I've got the options of either doing a set or a get. Now we've already done a set, we've already set the variable. You could have another one that sets a different value it will always be a latest text precedent. So whichever value it gets last, it will update the variable in the uh, in the, the user interface. But we're going to do a get, so it's going to get the value and pull it out. And you've only got one option there, you can just drag it out. And you see here the duration is the same color. That's because they're both floats. So they naturally link without needing to be converted. Uh, but we're just going to drag it into the string here so we can see what the, the value ends up being. And in theory, we shouldn't see any change in the editor because all we're doing is telling this variable what's happening in the slider and it's storing it. And then here we are reading that stored information back out again and it all happens in real time on every tick. So if I compile and save, now when I hit play, if I move the slider, nothing should happen, right? Because it's creating a value and it's storing it in the variable, but we're not telling the variable to print to the screen. To do that, we need to hit the test button again. So hit that and there we go, we've got a variable. Let's move it again, hit, and we've got a different variable. Yeah, and if I keep hitting it, it'll be the same. So now we've found two different ways of getting that information and sharing it. So that's the point of a variable, and we're going to use them a lot. There's different types. It's very important to understand that they are effectively a container for information, 
you will have lots and lots of variables by the end of this project because we're trying to store lots of data from the user interface and going into the, um, the DMX engine. So in the next lesson, we're going to pick up how to get that in and out of the um, uh, in and out of the user interface so we can put it back into DMX.